uh, pulled lately, but that's neither here nor there. You guys aren't here to uh, listen to me rant and rave about YouTube. You're here for some spire slaying. So, I think that is precisely what we will be doing. Alright, so, Slay the Spire, uh, so in our last stream of this, uh, we had success with the Silent, finally, an on-camera uh, victory. We then switched over, ba switched back over to the Ironclad and were met with a crushing, um, but late in the run, defeat. Uh, and I'm still a little bit miffed about that, uh, both at myself and at the game, but more so myself. There were some things that I could have done differently. And looking back at the tapes, uh, the, uh, the, uh, my deck was getting bloated, it was getting horribly bloated. I mean, it's one thing to decide not to play, play a lean deck, and it's another thing to just make your deck a gigantic clown fiesta of every card imaginable. Uh, its consistency just goes completely out the door. So, let us try the Ironclad again. Maybe this time make it a little bit leaner, a little bit more focused. I think that's, uh, I think that might bring us a little something of success. Thankfully, however, since our last attempt uh, did make it to the first boss, uh, we are going to be able to select a boon. Uh, we weren't able to do that. Now... Lose your starting relic. I'm willing to entertain this one with the silent, because the silent starting relic, um, where she gets uh, two extra cards on the first turn of each combat, is okay, but not great. However, the ironclad's heal six at the end of combat is too good to pass up. Uh, I mean, just seriously too good to pass up. I would love to transform two cards if it, but obtaining a curse. Ugh. Do we get to see the map before? Yes, we do. Where's our first store? Our first store is really close by. Okay, you know what? You know what? I think I'm willing to entertain um, uh, taking that curse because um, we can get rid of it pretty quickly. Uh, and transforming two cards at the beginning of the game, I think that's going to be a pretty good idea. Not to mention it'll help us d help dictate what our deck's going to be doing. Alright, yeah, we're going to want to get rid of that thing. Select two... Wait, can I transform... Oh, wait, you know what? If you transform a curse, it, get it turns into a different curse. So that's not really going to do you any good. Uh, let's do a strike and a defend. Ooh! Ooh, brutality! Oh, and then, um, oh, okay. I am so happy I went with that. Risk reward indeed. So we only really, ideally, only have to deal with um, this uh, one, uh, this writhe here once, and to deal 13 damage, we can just punch this louse to death. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Flat. We'll cast you, and, well, we only have Defend left anyway. Yeah, go ahead and weaken me. I don't care. Heck, we will... Uh, we'll, we'll Defend. It's okay if we take a straight hit point of damage here or there. Um because we regen six hit points. So we can take up to six damage per combat and not really worry about it. It's essentially nullified. So yeah, yeah, you weaken me, you blah, blah, blah. You do whatever the heck you want. I think the solution here is to make you vulnerable and then uh, not quite, not quite enough to kill you, but you're just gonna be doing something. Yeah, you're just gonna weaken me again. That's fine, that doesn't do I personally pre uh, prefer the Ironclad or the Silent? You know, that's a very interesting question. Um, I have to admit, at the beginning, when I first started uh, playing this series, I, I loved the Ironclad. I got all of his unlocks done first. I was playing him to death. I loved him. And then when I switched over to the Silent, I kind of started playing her. I was like, well, I, she's got her own unlocks that I got to do. I guess I have to play her. 
uh, grumble, grumble, you know. And I'll, I'll admit, for the first half of the unlocks, I wasn't really that big of a fan. Until I started seeing you, seeing some of the synergies and some of the powers that she could pull off. Um, so to answer your question uh, unsatisfactorily, I kind of like them both. Um, the the Ironclad is probably the more consistent. Um, he's he's more he's it's it's easier to build a powerful game-winning deck with the uh, with the Ironclad. But the Silent, you can completely break that. Okay, so let's see here. Um, we got Perfected Strike, no, because we already got rid of one of our strikes and we're going to be getting rid of more of them. Uh, do we want to go to a Woundtastic Evolve deck? Uh, we, we saw success with that before. Eh, I don't know. Um, let's see. We don't, um, we don't have any exhaust tech yet, but this could open the door for exhaust tech for us. And you know what? A little extra block's never, never a bad thing. So I think I'm going to go with Sentinel. I think we're going to go with Sentinel. Alright, what you got for me? Hey, hey! We get to transform a third card! Beautiful! Welp, um, because we picked up Sentinel, I'm comfortable transforming a Vanilla Defend. And Flex! Okay! <laughs> Flex is great! I don't know if we're gonna go for a full-on uh, strength build like we did the last uh, our last Ironclad deck, but our stray flex is never a bad thing, you know. Even if you're not a strength-focused deck. All right, let's get rid of that damn curse. Rive, get out of here. Uh, do we have any? Uh, no, we can't. Uh, we're short a couple of. Go well, again, that's we're not going for strength based. Um, yeah, we're not really miss. I mean, shrug it off would be nice, uh, and we probably could have afforded it if 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 it was the one that was on sale. Um, but right now, nothing else really speaks to our deck, so I'm I'm content with just burning our curse. And now we can proceed without that curse, and we still got that benefit of those two starting transformed cards. By the way, happen to be really good ones. Depending on what cards we pick up in the next two regular fights, I might be willing to entertain that uh, that for. Ooh, no uh, no defense here. Well, that's okay. We'll flex it up. I think an uppercut would be in because that'll that'll at least make him weak and vulnerable. And we can take five damage because again we get six uh, regen, so I don't mind uh, I don't mind taking a little bit. I probably should have trans. Yeah, here comes all of our defenses. Um, I don't know if I want to brutality um, in this particular case. I think we'll just go for the double defend um, and then go for the strike. Because, uh, yeah, lose one HP. We've already lost five, so this one will probably bring us a little bit lower. So in this case, I will not be utilizing brutality. Normally I would. Normally I would, because the benefit outweighs the one hit point loss. It also opens up the door to... Um, can we kill him this turn? I don't know, we're still weak. We're gonna, take, we're, gonna take, we're gonna take a net loss of hit points at the end of this combat, but hopefully we can mitigate that. Two strikes, down he goes. All right, so we're net down one hit point, but that's okay. Uh, armaments. Armaments. Armaments is always good to take because once you upgrade it, it can upgrade everything in your hand. Um, and hey, a little bit extra defense is never a bad thing. Alright, jaw worm's not bad. Flex in. Well, I think uppercut plus defend might be the correct answer here. We'll lose a little bit of uh, hit points here. I think 
upgraded uppercut gives you two rounds of both. Hmm. Now, not enough offense here. Yeah, with the AL brutality, we can we can uh, save a few. Uh, we can, we can get extra cards, which will make it more likely for us to get the desired hand to deal with whatever the heck they're dealing with here. Okay, so you're giving me ten. Um, I think the correct answer here is we flex. The armaments, and now since it's uh, it's not upgraded, we can only upgrade one thing. Um, so we're going to upgrade our strike. And again, it's just temporary upgrade. Um, and that also gave us five armor. Uh, we get another five armor to block his damage, and then we use our strike to dish out some pain. And we should be able to kill him this turn. Down he goes. And we heal for exactly back to full. Okay. Um, second wind. Second wind would have been good if we had taken Evolve back there. Um, but we didn't. And it's still effective. Um, if we if we encounter enemies that try to load our hand up with, uh, um, you know, bad cards, uh, dazes, wounds, burns, that sort of thing. A second wind can blow all of that out of our hand and give us honey bunches of defenses in return. Um, that being said, exhaust all, oh wait, exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand. Um, we have um, Sentinel, which is a non-attack card, which gives us a benefit if we exhaust it. You know what, second wind. That gives us a synergy and opens up the door for more synergies. Um, you know what? Because we are loaded up with defense cards and we've already got a little bit of a synergy running and also because we've got a weak potion going, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I think an elite would be the correct answer here. Uh, this thing. Okay. Um, I think, is there anything that we, I mean, we could do brutality. The what the thing about this guy is you have two turns to sort of fart around and do nothing. As long as you don't, as long as you don't do him hit point damage, you can fart around for two turns and not do anything. And that allows you to sort of cycle through your deck, get your powers going, get your you know, buffs going, get some ideal setups going before he wakes up and starts wailing on you. Um, and while, yes, we could grab uh, Brutality, um, and unfortunately Second Wind is not in the same place as Sentinel, um, being able to flex Uppercut here, not a bad thing. Because we flex, uppercut, and then strike, uh, boosted by that vulnerable. And he's going to be stunned for a turn. And this is why I'm glad I have a weak potion. Because that, that uppercut's my only source of weak. Uh, and we're going to want a more persistent source of weak. All right, um, I think armaments to boost defend and then defend. That gives me the 13, so I can start chipping away at him. Now, you don't want this fight to last too long because he will slowly drain your stats. All right, yeah, we would definitely want brutality just to upgrade everything else. Uh, armaments, again, is great. Um, I think we're going to upgrade Bash. Yes, we're going to take some to the face, but... That gives us three vulnerable turns, so we can start wailing on him more effectively. That and our uh, potion's going to be run running out soon. And now we have um, now we have a case to to do this. Now uppercut deal 13 damage, weak and vulnerable. That's probably a good idea. 
Um, because yeah, it does it does more base damage than the strikes, and it gives us extra goodies. And yeah, extra ticks of vulnerable and extra ticks of weak, certainly welcome. Especially since we're about to have our stats lowered. All right, good flex. Give me, oh, uppercut again, okay. We will keep that going. Can we burn you down? Actually, hang on. Yeah, too weak and too vulnerable. Too weak and too vulnerable works for me. Keep, keep your stats nerfed. Yeah, he's gonna be dishing out some pain, but that's to be expected from Elite. Do not expect to come away from an Elite fight. Oh, hey! This is the proper use here. Um, we exhaust Sentinel with Second Wind. And that gives us two more energy, uh, which allows us to uh, drop a Bash, and drop that, and drop that. Combo success! And we didn't even leave that... Ooh, Vajira! Extra plus one strength permanently. Um, okay. Uh, we don't need two sets of armaments. That's overkill. Rage! Whenever you play an attack this turn, gain four block. Uh, I'm kind of loading up really heavily with the defenses, and I don't really have, like, I, if we were rocking Anger, Rage would is a perfect complement to Anger. But, yeah. I mean, it is a good, it is a good card, but... We already have a lot of other defensive options, so I'm going to skip it in order to keep the deck lean. Ooh, we can sacrifice something. Uh, receive a reward based on the offer, eh? Well, you know what? Uppercut is good, but it's not great. It's not great. I might... I might sacrifice that, or you know what? I could sacrifice Brutality. I mean, granted, Brutality is a really freaking good card. Don't get me wrong. Um, but hmm, we don't really have HP loss. Is it really better than Bash? Well, here's the thing. Uppercut is an uncommon card. The more rare of a card you sacrifice to these... Uh, um, to these sprites, the better your reward. Um, you know what? I might give up brutality um, because we're not. It doesn't look like we're really going for um, uh, HP tech, uh, HP loss tech rather. And while drawing the extra card is certainly well, it is really useful. But giving up a gold card, I think, gives you the best reward. Hello, wife unit. Um, giving up a giving up an uncommon card like uppercut. Well, you know what? If we if we if we buff that, then we get two and two, and it becomes really good. Oh, decisions, decisions. I'm gonna I'm gonna give up brutality. Yeah, let's give up brutality and get the maximum reward here. The flames burst, knocking you off your feet. Your spirits dance around you excitedly before merging into your form, filling you with warmth and strength. Your max HP is increased by 10, and you are healed to full. Nice! Um, not, not a bad event to get right after an elite fight. So they were happy about that. And since we are full HP, no need to rest. Time to smith. And what shall we smith? Well, I think uppercut is the correct answer because it gives us extra turns of these. No, 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 no. Armaments is the correct answer because it upgrades all the cards in your hand for the rest of combat, which if uppercuts in there, will upgrade it. All right, let's see what we get here. Centennial. Oh, for Pete's sake, and I got rid of freaking brutality. That's all right. It's only it only works on the first time, not every time. Uh, and I'm sure we'll lose HP along the way. All right, Mr. Thief. Yeah, see here, armaments. If we play armaments, everything in the hand gets upgraded now. Which means we can ultra flex and uh, we can throw down a, uh, a good sentinel. A 
Now, you don't want to you don't want to play these guys too conservatively. Exhaust all non-attack cards gain five block for each. So if we exhaust these two defends, this turns into a into a ten block for only one energy, which actually works out proper. Boom, boom, and then slice, slice, and then that brings him down to acceptable life. Because if he decides to start running um, the next turn, nope, oh, no, he's going for the lunge. That's fine. Uh, flex it up. We don't need to upgrade Uppercut because, you well, know, he's going to pretty much be dead next turn. Oh, well, this turn. Ooh, Whirlwind is always, always a good choice. Um, do we have anything that's really worth headbutting? Uh, Flex is worth headbutting. Um, Armaments is worth headbutting. Whirlwind. And you know what? Since we're not doing damage focus, I don't know if Whirlwind really works. I mean, you could combo Whirlwind. You could do like a second win, exhaust Sentinel to get a bunch of uh, extra energy, and then Whirlwind. Uh, Whirl that win? You want Whirlwind? All right, we'll take Whirlwind. It is a good option, especially... And, and that actually, we don't have any multi-target stuff right now, so that gives us some multi-target. All right, this dude. We got a burn, baby burn. Go for the flex. Oh, I wish I could upgrade this. Uh, I think I'm actually going to go for the Bash. Even though this does more damage, it gives us two turns of Vulnerable, and his um, weak is going to wear off uh, next turn anyway. So we're going to go for the Bash just to get uh, a turn of Vulnerable next turn. And, of course, go for the Strike, because he doesn't do any uh, attacking this turn. The real, uh, the real gem when fighting this guy is if you happen to pick up a... Uh, an attack that uh, also gives you defend, like Iron Wave, then you're in a really good spot. Uh, spend all to do six damage to each, and then these, well, it's actually cheaper to do all strikes. And then second one's gonna do absolutely nothing. But hey, we'll get extra cards uh, with our first, uh, with our first thing. There's some armaments, and now, we get even more cards, and now we armor mince the whole lot. And yes, I'm willing to spend a skill to give him that buff to upgrade our entire hand. All right, we'll go for the improved flex. Yes, I know that's a skill. We're going to try and kill this guy this turn. And unfortunately, that ran off. 14 and 14 is not going to quite cut it. Uh, but it'll bring him so close to death. I mean, we could do one of these and just just piss him off a little bit more, and then uh, we'll go for the bash. That way, we can easily dispatch him next turn, and we're only going to take uh, five damage. And again, don't expect to walk away from an elite fight without damage. All right, I think we uh, I think we're good here. Well, bam! Uh, Darkstone Periop, not my favorite. Dropkick, one of my favorites. Uh, deal five damage if the enemy is vulnerable. We have two different cards in our in our hand that uh, uh, give the vulnerable state. So this thing is likely to trigger itself. So it's definitely going for the dropkick. Because it's it, it if you if you target someone who is already vulnerable, it not only gives you an extra energy to replace the one that you had to pay for it, but it gives you an extra card to replace the card you drew for it. So it essentially makes it free damage. Ah, this guy. All right. Well, we should be all right to burn him down pretty quickly. Uh, we do not have a. Uh, we don't have. Ooh, second wind sentinel. All right, so here's what we do. We armor mints to upgrade everything. We second wind to burn up sentinel, gain three energy, and then whirlwind to spend it all. 
Dink, 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 dink. And we've got almost enough defense to block his attack anyway. All right, see? All right, you got. You were right, Bako, Bako SC. You were right. And then we should be able to just kill him this turn. Punch. Shrug it off is good. Uh, corruption, not with this deck. I mean, corruption can make an entire deck into of itself. But we already have stuff that exhausts our, our skills. So we don't want it to compete with corruption. Uh, twin strike's always good. But again, we're not a strength-based deck. Uh, shrug it off still not bad. I mean, Shr shrug it off is just a good solid stuff. We also, but we already have a lot of defenses too. Um, uh, you know what? I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna keep the deck lean. We're at 14 cards. Never changed my title. I thought I did. Yeah, I ch I I have Slay the Spy. I mean, other than the fact that I have 666 followers, I'm sure I've grown from there. Um, we've got 232 gold, so I think I'm going to go up the route that gives us a last minute shop. All right, these, these two, um, well, we can start things off with an armaments upgrade everything. Uh, no, uh, let's see, uh, we could go heavy defense here. I mean, both of these give us a block. Yeah, that'll block those things. Then we can just, we can hit the uh, blouse to uh, trigger his defenses. Get, get that out of the way. Besides, we want to kill him first since he doesn't debuff us on death. All right, no real good combo with second win. Uh, I think we just strike to kill the louse. And we'll uppercut to uh, weaken him. That brings his damage down to four, uh, which we can just heal back. And get some extra cards. And we get armament, so we can upgrade this whole, whole bunch. Now, do we want to? I mean, we might just be able to kill him at this point. Um, yeah, I think we, I think we just kill him. Clash! It only be played if every card in your hand is an attack. Ooh, that actually pairs really well with Second Wind. Because Second Wind not only burns up non-attack cards in my hand, if I get saddled with crap, like curses and wounds and stuff, uh, it burns those up too, thus opening the door for me to play Clash. And it's a 14 damage attack for zero, as long as we meet the requirements. So in this specific instance, Clash is a good idea. All right, Mr. Merchant, what you got for me? Uh, feel no, feel no pain. Ha ha ha, feel no pain. More exhaustion tech. Oh, and Havoc, more exhaustion tech. Although this this runs the risk of, uh, um, oh, Singing Bull, Singing Bull. One of the best one of the best artifacts in the game. I have to buy it. I don't care if I lose out on my card removal. Uh, I gotta buy Singing Bull. Perfected Strike is bunk. Pommel Strike's not bad, but Feel No Pain kind of works, cause we. I mean, it only really works with second win, but if we second win, we're gonna get a metric F ton of uh, defense, which actually kind of makes it a little redundant if we're gonna be completely honest here. Because um, we're gonna be getting defend when we exhaust cards anyway. So yeah, it's a little defend redundant. Play the top card of your card and exhaust it is an interesting choice. Uh, the only pro well, we have a couple of two cost cards that really works well when you have expensive cards in your deck because you might get to play those for free. Oh. Deep breath. 
No, nah, deep breath doesn't really work with this deck. Not worth the expense. I think I'm willing to hold on to my money. But I'm so happy we got uh, uh, Singing Ball, because that works out so well uh, in just every instance. And it really encourages you to keep your deck lean, because you get rewarded every time you pass up a card. Uh, let's go for some smithing here. Let's see. Uh, what does Second Wind do? Uh, just more block. That's not bad. What type of deck does Deep Breath work well in? Um, a um, a um, an anger deck, where you know the, every time you play an anger, um, they, they multiply. If you play a couple of angers and they multiply, and then you Deep Breath to forcibly move your discard pile back to your draw pile, next turn you're gonna get a whole crap ton of angers, which makes more angers, and you can just play like infinite angers, provided you have some good combo pieces. Um, Basically, any deck with a lot of low-cost or zero-cost cards can benefit from that. Um, or you can do some real malarkey with uh, decks that are um, 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 really, really lean, like under 10 cards lean. You can just keep cycling the same cards over and over. Right then, um, I think uh, upgrading Uppercut is the correct answer, because get, getting those extra turns is worth it. All right, this guy, we should be okay to, uh, against him. Um, not a great starting hand, but we might as well upgrade everything and go strike, strike. We should be able to knock him out before he gets to do his fierce bash against us. Um, yeah, we go for the flex, and that actually opens up Clash, because all of the rest of these are attacks. Um, let's see, Clash would do 17 damage. Ooh, here's, here's, so here's something. We Clash, that almost makes him uh, transform. But if we Whirlwind, then it'll do all of its things and then he'll transform so we get to lop off more uh, more um, damage from him before he goes defensive. Dink, dink, dink. Shink! Because he doesn't get that 20 armor until after that attack is finished. Alright, um... Second win. Well, I don't want to exhaust my defense needlessly because we do kind of need to cycle through them. Um, so in this case, I think I'm just going to play the regular defend here, and then we're going to go for the uppercut to uh, uh, nerf his damage and make him vulnerable going forward. Yeah, it would take a little bit of damage, but that's okay. Come on, armor man, damn! Well, at least we get to dropkick him for free. Damn. Well, um... Let's see. Well, we could just play our, uh... Second Wind here for 10 armor. That's not a bad idea. And that opens up Clash. Oh, it only burns the one card. Never mind. That's okay. We got a lot of hit points, and you, since you heal back at the end of uh, at the end of a chapter, it's okay if we take a lot of hit point damage here. Um, so I'm okay with that. Let's um, let's clash because it's it's all good and stuff. And we'll uh, we'll uppercut again just to keep those uh, vulnerables and weaks rolling. Should be good. Let's armaments flex. Uh, we'll go for a defend, and then a simple strike should do. Yeah, blocked it almost exactly. All right, Sentinel and second win. Nice. Although we don't have anything to spend the energy on. Let's let's be honest here. We don't have. We don't have, that's too much energy. 
Uh, we actually need all of the damage that we can get. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. I'm, it there's, I don't want to burn Sentinel when I can't use it properly. What those wear off? Impossible. Not on my watch. Yeah, at this point I'm okay just taking stuff to the face. Um, now let's armaments. Upgrade the remaining stuff that hasn't been upgraded. Drop kick. Uh, I have a non-attack card in my house. Oh, lock. There we go. Yeah, Clash is going to work out real well in this deck. Oh, 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 more exhaustion tech. Oh, fiend fire. Oh, holy crap. Holy crap, fiend fire. This just burns everything and turns it all into raw damage. Oh, we have to. We have to. We, we, all right, we're going all exhaustion tech in this deck. Anything that does exhaustion is going to be good. Uh, replaces burning blood, heal 10. Ooh. Uh, no, no confusion, please. You would die, heal to 50 instead of, yeah, no, we're going to go black blood. We're going to, uh, we're going to go black blood and heal 10 every combat. 